Now, tonight we're going to be looking at LibreOffice. It's a free alternative to Microsoft Office. Right. You've used it? I've used it. Are and you using I, it at work? Yes, I use it for work. I have it on my laptop here. I, oh, yes. Yes. I love it. I will. It's free. It's free. I love free. Um, I love it. I don't love everything about like the translation between mm. programs. It's like... It's so close to Microsoft Office, yet there are so many distinctions that make it obvious that it's not mm -hmm. Microsoft Office. Exactly. So when you're in Writer, LibreOffice Writer, mm -hmm. which is very much a Word clone, yeah. there's so much about it that is like, uh, it's not Word. Things are not where I expect them to be. Any guesses why that would be? Because it's free? Sure. And that's, <laughs> that's what everyone, uh, that's the right answer that everyone will give right off the bat. Okay. Oh, it's, it's the free alternative. So I got to live with the fact that it's different. Right. And, and that's true to some degree, but let me just put some clarity to that statement. Okay. If I was a, an, as amazing of a developer as the Open Document Foundation and was able to create something that was an exact one-to-one -one clone of Microsoft Office. Right. How do you, as a lawyer, think <laughs> Microsoft is going to react to that? Ooh. Yes. Right. Clear? Yes. So there is a purposeful distinction between LibreOffice and Microsoft Office. Okay. Because if it's too close, if it's too similar, now we're potentially infringing into a space that could right. lead to legal ramifications. So they've intentionally added some like static and some friction in the A transfer. little bit, yes. Yeah. Okay, just enough. But it's up to us users and part of the whole open aspect of Linux and free software mm -hmm. and open source software. It's, it's up to us to be able to control the way that we are able to interact with our computers and our software. That's part of the beauty of Libre and open source software. Right. So with that in mind, what's to stop me, the user, from adding a few little enhancements, if you will, hmm. to take my LibreOffice, which is not infringing on Microsoft's design at right. all, and make mine feel and look and operate not exactly like we're not talking a one-to-one -one. it is a no. different product but let's see what we can do to make it a little more familiar to us yes so i'm going to hop over to my laptop here and i've got uh, ubuntu linux up on my screen and indeed this is running in microsoft windows on hyper v as we've learned over the past two weeks on category 5 technology tv so i'm going to log in here I, I couldn't tell you why I'm seeing uh, an Ubuntu login screen as opposed mm. to, but hey, there it is. All right, so I'm going to bring up Writer. Okay. And you're going to see that, hey, this really does look fairly similar. It does. And uh, like even the keyboard shortcuts are very similar. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a big keyboard shortcut person in, in Word, but hello. And if I control A, control B, control U. Yeah. Control I. I mean, I can do those kinds of things. Great. That's helpful, right? But what can I do to make this look a little more and behave a little more like Microsoft Office? Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to close out of that. And we're going to bring up our Firefox browser here that comes with Ubuntu. Now, do keep in mind here, Sasha yeah. and community, I'm doing this on Ubuntu because we do have a Linux bias, and I want you to see that, hey, this works great on Linux, but um, you can install LibreOffice on Windows and Mac as well. I have it at my office. I okay. run on Windows, but I have... Your Windows 10. Yeah. So I you've installed LibreOffice because it's a free version of an right. Office suite that is compatible with Word documents and Excel spreadsheets and things. You can save in those formats. Right. You can open those formats. So it really is a one-to-one -one replacement in that regard. Exactly. But a lot so. cheaper. Right. Being like being free. Zero like being 100% cheaper. <laughs> yes, 100%. No matter what price you find, this is cheaper. So let's get over here. And where I want to go is... Ex now, we're going to do a, a couple of different steps here, I okay. should just say. Um, we're going to set up our LibreOffice writer in particular to behave more like Microsoft Word. So okay. it's not just interface. I'm starting with 
autocorrect and the dictionary that's because that's really a, important out of the box it drives users nuts because they say my dictionary doesn't work on LibreOffice I do a spell check and it just says everything's fine and I know there's some typos there so this is funny I feel like that this feature is all about me because it's this all happened. for you Sash this happened to me very <laughs> recently so let's all right yeah, so let's, let's jump out. over and let's see what we need to do so I'm gonna actually head over to extensions.libreoffice.org and notice that LibreOffice.org is in fact where you would download LibreOffice from, so just leave off the extensions and you'll be able to uh, download the free software as well. We're working with version 6 point something, um, so it's important to note that you have to be on version 6 in order to do all that we're doing here today. Okay. So if your distro or if your operating system has version 5, which is still great, you want to upgrade to version 6, which came out uh, in February and now we're October, so it's it's been around a while, right. so you should have it by now. So it's great plus one. Just keep in mind, you need to have version 6 or higher. Yes. Uh, okay, so I'm going to do a search here for English Dictionary. And you can do a search for a dictionary that's relevant to you, uh, to your language. There are many. I'm going to click on English Dictionaries here. And within this page, I'm just going to scroll down a little ways here. And you can see that there is a file that ends in .ox.t, and that's what I want to download. So I'm going to save that file to my computer, and that puts it in my Downloads folder. So if I go into show all downloads, you can see there's my dictionary file. So now I'm going to open LibreOffice Writer. And I'm going to go Tools, Extension Manager, and I'm going to click on Add. From there, I'm going to browse to my downloads. And then I see the dictionary for English. Double click on that. And it is now installed English Spelling and Hyphenation Dictionary on LibreOffice Writer. And that includes... Australia, Canadian, British, American, and South African English. Okay, so now I can close that, <laughs> restart LibreOffice, and now, as I type, it's going to see the spelling errors, okay. and if I hit F7, it's going to actually look it up in the dictionary there and give me suggestions that I can use. Any questions so far? I'm going to do this. All right. We're good? Yes. All right. So, so far, you've explained it in a way that I can actually make it happen. Fantastic. So, so that takes us, that gives us the dictionary. That's all there is to it. That's but because fun. it doesn't come with it out of the box, it's tough. Because, hey, when I hit F7 or when I click on spell check, it doesn't do anything. Right. I was like, I know I spell some words wrong. Mm -hmm. Like, I know I didn't write this entire paper with zero <laughs> issues. <laughs> It's 10,000 words. All right. So there you go. There's your dictionary. That's all done and done. Next step does have to do with the look of LibreOffice. So it's really important for me. I want to make this look and feel a lot more like Microsoft Word. Mm -hmm. And similarly, Microsoft Excel and so on and so forth. Um, the right. whole suite is there with LibreOffice. So it's twofold. First thing that we're going to do is look at the icon set. Now, okay. If you install LibreOffice 6.1, it comes with something called Colibre. And that is an icon set that has been basically manufactured to look like Microsoft Office icons, but not infringe on their, their rights. Particular yeah, rights. Yes. not cause any legal issues. No toe stepping. But there's a different one. Now, I don't have 6.1. Let's look at what version of uh, LibreOffice came with Ubuntu here. 6.0.3.2. So I purposefully kept myself held back at 6.0 because I want to show you a way to get those, or at least similar icons, on um, a slightly older version, 6.0, um, without having to um, upgrade or anything like that. But again, you've got to have 6.0. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to jump over to my web browser again. I'm going to close out of LibreOffice here. And we're going to go cat5 dot tv slash libre l i b r e office mm -hmm. icons that's where we want to go and the reason i want to take you here this is going to take us over to deviantart and this is the office 2013 theme that's just loading here and this theme was created a while back, back in 2015, and it's built specifically to look very similar to Office 2013. The reason that I want to show this to you is because it will work with LibreOffice all the way back to 5.1. Okay. But Robbie, you said we need 6 point something. 
that's because of the third step that we're going to be taking tonight. This mm -hmm. icon set will improve the look of your LibreOffice writer and Excel, uh, um, calc and all those applications, even if you have an older version, 5.x. Right. But we want 6.0 plus. Or <laughs> yeah, for the next step. So for this one, it's going to work with anything, and we've got 6.0, so we're golden. On 6.0, I can just download the extension. On older versions, 5.x, you're going to have to follow these instructions here. Um, because I'm on 6.0, I can just download the extension. Do, 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 do. And here we go. It's taking me over to the author's OneDrive. I'm going to click Download. And again, it's just going to... Uh, now, I don't want to open it. I want to save it. Okay. That's going to throw it into my downloads as well. There it is, Office 2013 theme 1.1.ox.t. So notice again, it ends in .ox.t. So open LibreOffice. We're going to go back into our Extension Manager, Tools, Extension Manager, and we're going to add again, and we're going to go into our downloads, and we're going to grab that Office 2013 theme, open, and now that one's installed. So now I can close that and restart. There we go. Nothing's changed. Why has nothing changed? Now, next step. Tools. Options. Mm -hmm. View. And you're going to see now there's a new icon style called Office 2013. If we click on that, and now I want to change my uh, icon size to, uh, I probably want to go large note, yeah. notebook bar icon size in uh, 6.x. Yeah make that large, and then hit OK and watch what happens. Boom. Looks beautiful, right? Yes. Icon theme looks a lot better. So now, the final step, and this is why we need version 6 or higher, is what do we know about Microsoft Office and the way that it operates on our computers now as far as the interface goes? They've done away with kind of like the file menu and the tools menu, and, and instead, everything works in tabs. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's so true. that's where this notebook bar, which is a, a reasonably new feature, I mean February of this year, um, that's where this comes in. And you'll notice if you go view, toolbar, layout, you've got default, single toolbar, and sidebar. None of those are what we want. So what we need to do is go tools, options, now we want to go into advanced and mm -hmm. in advanced you see an option that says enable experimental features <laughs> may be unstable which being translated is turn on the features that we don't want microsoft to see out of the box right i didn't say it did i say it oh my <laughs> microphone was on oh oh okay so, so hit okay now restart and then here we go now are you ready yes view Toolbar layout, what do you notice? Oh, there Default, it is. Default, single toolbar, sidebar, and notebook, notebook bar. bar. That's what we want. In three, two, one. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Bam! The, the closest thing that you're ever going to find right now in 2018, third quarter, to Microsoft Office for free, if you will. I mean, I say Microsoft Office. This is an alternative it's not a clone. It's not a, this is right. an alternative to Microsoft Office because we want something that we're familiar enough with that we can use it on our work computers and we don't get stuck trying to find things. You're mm -hmm. going to find that the layouts are much, much simpler. You're going to be able to find the things that you need, like paragraph um, spacing and things like that. All Everything just makes more sense. Now, if you're stuck, and if you, or if you want to revert, or if you want to change things, notice that there is a menu option over here to turn on the menu bar. Now, watch the top of my screen as soon as I hit that. Mm -hmm. Now, I've got my regular menus back. Oh, File, edit, yes. view. So I can always revert back if I want to, okay? But then I can click on that hamburger menu and turn off menu bar when I'm done. And it goes yeah. back to that Microsoft Office style layout. Would that improve the communication kind of between the two if I'm trying to open something that was created in Microsoft Office? Well, or? with LibreOffice 6, yeah. the inter, um, intercommunication ability between the, the file formats has been greatly improved. Oh, now, okay. it's always been really good. But what that means is that if somebody in your office is using Microsoft Word legitimately, that is true. they can send you a doc file or docx, right. and you can open it, you can make changes to it, you can save it, and then you can send it back to them, and it will look great. Okay. 
Now, where it, it may fall short is if you start formatting things with fancy fonts or things like that that your computer right. has that their computer does not. Because remember, with a Word document, it's, it doesn't include the, fi the uh, TTF, the font files, in there. So they have to install the same fonts that you have. Okay, I'm going to just throw you a quick scenario. Yes. So, Microsoft Excel... Okay. Calc on LibreOffice. Right. Created mm -hmm. a spreadsheet that my computer in Calc would love to print, but when I open it, it's like this big on the page. Mm -hmm. Is that because I just don't have the right... You know what? I'd, I'd probably have to see that, Sasha, because oh, okay. it could be so many different things. Darn, I thought it was just like, I know. follow these Wouldn't it be steps? nice if it was just, yeah. You should Dude. be able just to open it. Try it with the, new, with the newer version. Exactly. Up I think maybe I just don't Libre have Office. the right LibreOffice version. Could be. Maybe it's just going to work bingo bango just like that. When I do talk about fonts, this is the one thing that you will encounter. Not so much with Excel, because typically you don't stylize it like you do with Word. Yeah. Um, when I do talk about fonts, if you're on Linux... Yes. There is a way for you to quickly, and we've looked at this on the show before, but to quickly get the Microsoft fonts like Times New Roman. This is okay. important for you if you're expected to be um, uh, using Times New Roman. I'm just going to go into Terminal. Okay. And I'm going to go sudo su because I'm on Ubuntu. Enter my password. And apt update. This is only for Linux, so everything else has, uh, that I've done is it transcends Windows, Linux, whatever. But if you have Linux, you probably want those Microsoft fonts apt install, and I think it's ms ttf dash ms core fonts. Let's see if that's right. No, I'm gonna do a quick search for you. Ttf ms core fonts. Let's see what what file name it is. Ttf dash ms core fonts installer. That's what I missed. So, dash installer. Say yes. And what that's going to do is it's going to give you Times New Roman, Arial, all that kind of stuff. Hit tab, enter. Do you accept the end user license agreement? Yes. And here we go. I'm going to now, I'm just going to show you quickly. So, here's hi there, and I'm going to highlight that. And um, let's see here. Let's look for Arial, for example. Notice? Mm -hmm. There's no Arial. No. Okay. Now I'm going to close LibreOffice Writer. Don't save. Now that's finished. So now when I reopen LibreOffice Writer, it now has access to any new fonts that were installed on the system. Hello. Highlight that. Now let's grab our fonts here. What do you notice? <gasps> Right? Arial. Yeah, and things like you know, Comic Sans MS. But also, I mean, Times New Roman is a popular one uh, for true. education. Let's see if it's here. There you go. Times New Roman. See? So really quick things that you can do to make LibreOffice, the free office alternative, behave and feel pretty much, I mean, a lot closer to Microsoft Office. It's not a one-to-one, -one, folks. But it takes that to the next level for you so that you can feel a little more comfortable with it uh, when you're using LibreOffice, the free alternative to Microsoft Office on your computer. Give it a chance. Give it a try. It's LibreOffice.org. And uh, follow the steps that we've shown you here tonight to make it feel a little more like you're used to. Super. Thank you. And if it's not working for you? Right. Then by all means, go out and buy Office. Exactly. Right? You know yeah. what I mean? Give it a try. Try to get comfortable with it. See if you can use it for a couple of weeks and see how it works for you. Do these steps. Make it feel good. If, yeah. And you've po possibly saved yourself a fair bit of money. Yeah. You know what? Go out and price out. Yeah, first. go go to your pricing first, and then go, you'll be like, go yes. Go and be like, wait, no. You I know can. what? I'm, I'm happy with this, even if there are a couple of little quirks that are not quite exact. <laughs>